everybody just picked up the bike. I'm in Laverne, California. This is a 21 Kawasaki Versus 650. And uh, really excited for this. I've owned the Versus 1000, so I'm familiar with the platform. And I knew that these luggage options, the OEM ones, have a lot of space. So that's the main reason I chose this particular bike. Uh, but I'm heading down to Newport Beach and I'm gonna go up the coast, so here we go. Welcome to Newport Beach. So I picked up the bike, Versus 650 2021, and it's got about 13,000 miles on it. I knew ahead of time that I wanted this luggage uh, because I know how spacious it is and it's easy to remove. Um, so locking luggage for the hotel and removable so I can carry up to my room if need be. Top case was a huge plus for sure. Um, so yeah, the, the pickup process was really easy. Uh, it was in Laverne, California, um, just basically outside LA, not that far. And uh, yeah, super easy. And they were nice enough to store my luggage. So I'll leave a link below for this specific bike. Uh, but yeah, I definitely uh, am really liking it so far. The ride down to Newport, super quick, uh, hit almost no traffic. And now we're gonna get on the one and start driving along the coastline. So here we go. Oh, and by the way, this bike's got a nice exhaust sound. Check it out, aftermarket exhaust. Not bad, not bad. So here we go. So we're going forward to Newport Boulevard, I believe it is. And we're just gonna cut through here. There's no right turns, so cut through this alleyway, see where it takes us. And then we make a left on Highway 1. And that is the plan. This looks like Grand Theft Auto right here. Man, this is so cool. Can't tell you how excited I am to be doing this right now. Uh, this is so different than anything I've done before. I've done stuff all over New Mexico and a little bit in surrounding states, but uh, this is totally different for me. The weather could not be better, honestly. It is absolutely perfect. Uh, it is warm. I'm not sweating though. I'd say it feels like it's about 75 degrees. No breeze or anything like that. So riding right now is absolutely perfect. Lane splitting's a thing. I haven't had the chance to try it yet. There just hasn't been much traffic where I need to do it. If it gets kind of gridlocked at some point, I will, I'll go for it if it seems safe. But I'll be very cautious about it because I am a New Mexican after all, and that is not legal in New Mexico. So I'm not in practice with such a thing. And I recognize that. And in general, I'm a cautious writer. So I'll be definitely taking it easy. I'll probably say this about a hundred times before this video is over, but there's nothing like seeing this on a motorcycle. I've driven through here plenty of times before over the years, um, but on a bike, unparalleled, completely different. Uh, it's, like, it's, it's, it's like experiencing it for the first time, honestly. And I don't know if it's in my head, but I feel like I can smell the ocean and then I drive by some burger place. I can smell the grill, smell this oil drilling thing. That's great. But uh, yeah, you just can't beat the sensory input you get on a motorcycle. You just can't beat it. Oh, we've got here a meetup of Trail 125s? I don't know what those are. I'm sure there's a meetup for every type of vehicle imaginable in California. Hoping for a first view of the ocean pretty soon here. So, I've actually stayed in one of these very expensive houses before. My wife and I stayed in one when we were at the NAM conference about five, six years ago, and it was great. We had a friend who owned that house, and so it was right on the beach. I think they sold it for five or six million, something crazy like that. But uh, they let us stay in it for free, and man, what a great experience being on Newport Beach. There's the ocean, hello. Even with that freight boat, gorgeous. It's just so different than where I live. 
I try to keep that in perspective. Some people drive by this every day. And they're like, oh, whatever, it's my commute, but I love it. Absolutely love it. So that's why I keep that in perspective when I film videos in New Mexico. To me, not all the time, I really appreciate where I live, but occasionally I'm like, oh, I see this all the time. Not that interesting, but I just need to be reminded that to many people, it could be. It could be interesting. I'm fascinated by watching people drive their motorcycles around places like Thailand or India or Japan. That fascinates me. $15, okay. Well, that's that. That's a no. I just wanted to stop off for a second. So, we will continue on. We're getting great views though, and that's what matters. Ah, look at this cool camper. So, driving through here has been on my bucket list for a while. And it started with wanting to just drive the Highway 1 in a car. Um, but then, for whatever reason, I don't know, a while ago, I got this urge to ride a bike, specifically through here, through Huntington Beach. I don't know why. I guess just I've walked across that intersection so many times just as a tourist and I saw the motorcycles driving by and I was like, oh man, there's something about that. I want to do that. Oh, I'd love to stop. But not for $15. And it's not even the $15 part. It's, it's not even that. It's the I'm only stopping for a few minutes part. Well, that's okay. There'll be other places to stop, other beaches that probably, maybe, I don't know, will be free. Okay, well, maybe I should go straight. Time to drive down Huntington Beach. The light is turning golden too, so I think we are timing things right. And all we gotta do is get to Santa Monica tonight. Uh, fresh air, palm trees, resorts. The air does smell sweet. I don't know if it's in my mind, but it smells floral. Mm. Here we are in Huntington Beach. We're just coming up to that intersection where Huntington Surf and Sport is. And oh my gosh, the weather is perfect. It smells so nice out here. Middle of January and it is so warm. Could not be better. Busy as ever. Huntington Surf and Sport, Dukes. Lots of tents set up on the beach today. Everybody's on an e-bike today. All right, stopped off at Huntington. Here's the bike. It's been good so far. Look at that view. All right, we're in Long Beach. This place is happening, that's for sure. People everywhere. Definitely got a pretty down to earth vibe like a lot of fun. I'm starting to think that I'm a little behind schedule now because if I was going directly to Santa Monica, no big deal. Probably just be there right at sunset or a little after. However, I am taking the scenic route, which I'm not nervous about it. It's just more so a, I wanted to see things during the day. So we'll see how it all pans out. Um, there's some sites up here on East Ocean Avenue Boulevard that I wanted to see. Um, that hopefully it will still be light outside for.
So we've still got a good amount of driving to do to get to Santa Monica, but sunset is happening and I had to show you guys. Well, what a great sunset stop. So nice. But I know there's gonna be a lot of this. Gotta make time. We're on Paseo del Mar. And the road does end up here, so we need to do a quick detour to go around what I believe is a state park. There is a peacock right there. Peacock alert. Oh, there's another one. Oh my god. Right there. there. Wow, this is steep. Holy shit. I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. Gotta just do it though. Peacocks, steep hills, and one more peacocks, what the hell? What is this? If someone below knows what the deal is with the peacocks in this area, please let me know. I would be so curious to know. So currently I have my GPS going through my cardo system so it's giving me directions verbally through Google Maps and that's working great it would probably be better if I did have the GPS or phone mounted here I would not mind that at all for a visual reference however this has been working just fine and I cannot do this without any sort of guidance there's no way especially for me because I'm trying to hug the coast as much as possible so I'm taking detours to make that happen that's nice. These are some very nice houses in this area, that's for sure. Wow. Look at those. We are in Palos Verdes, or at least that's the road name. Not sure if that's actually what it's called. Trump National Golf Club, though. That's really the location I'm at, just to stop off for a minute. So, yeah, help me out. If you guys know what the city I'm in, please let me know. Um, when I planned this trip, I did sit down with Google Maps and roughly plan out a route. And I saved the, the points that I wanted to drive through. Because there's that area of the Pacific Coast Highway where it goes inland after, uh, after Long Beach, I believe. And I wanted to just stay on the coastline. That was the goal. So, yeah, I don't know if this is considered L.A. still or not. But it's been a fantastic ride so far. Oh, my gosh. Like... It has exceeded my expectations in every way. But we got a little more to do. Every time I think I'm done recording, the colors just become more vibrant or I see something cool or interesting. So I just am so appreciative of this trip already. Honestly, leaving a day just to go to Newport to Santa Monica could have done I could have used two or three days for that just because I want to stop at every little park and every little beach and there was those people on the park by that lighthouse that I would have just loved to have sat there and had some food but so I'm starting to realize that the pacing is everything uh, on this trip and I knew I, I thought I was building in a lot of extra time uh, on this trip for myself to enjoy but I underestimated how amazing and beautiful every little spot is. So, I guess I gotta do this again. That's all that means. All these cliffs here to my left, the, it just goes straight down to the beach. And I would love to just pull off there and enjoy and maybe fly the drone if there's no one around, but all for another time, I guess. Hopefully tomorrow I didn't overdo the mileage. I'm also thinking that 
there'll be less stopping because I don't know I was just about to say it might be less varied wow this is steep Tonight I'm staying at the Santa Monica Hotel. Not a bad place, 200 bucks a night, pretty reasonable and pretty updated. Not bad at all. Good morning, day two. So I'm in Santa Monica. I stayed here last night at the Santa Monica Hotel, which I do recommend. It was a nice place. Um, they definitely have done a good job updating it uh, from its, you know, obvious motel roots. But um, yeah, you know, it's got it where it counts. For Santa Monica, price was right. Um, rooms were clean. The only weird thing was in the shower, there was like a sponge be hidden behind the shampoo that had some hairs on it. That was really weird. But like everything else, very clean on the inside floors and at the bed sheets, everything was really nice actually. Uh, shower pressure pretty low um, so it took a lot longer to shower but hey you know what I would stay here again for the price because everything else in this area was just so darn expensive and then I ate at the pita house just a block or two down that way and uh, so yeah I would I would do all this again and I would recommend it you know I knew what I'm getting into when I'm looking at hotels in this price range um, as long as you're not expecting the Marriott it's all good. So, here we go. I'm feeling a lot more refreshed. I was pretty tired last night. Um, one other thing about the room, uh, the heat or the AC was not turned on. It is January to their credit, um, so it is winter, but it's pretty warm. Uh, you know, it's been seven, high 70s during the day so it would have been nice had a fan going it was alright but no AC alright we gotta fuel up get some gas and then we are off to the Pacific Coast Highway I'm doing 200 miles today so I'm hoping that 200 miles all day I purposely have set myself up for a nice leisurely pace we will see I want to stop off and look at things and get off the bike and walk around more and um, be at Morro Bay by sunset. That is certainly the goal, but if I'm driving in a little bit after, no big deal. What the heck is up with this gas station and with these speed bumps? I've never seen that before. That's interesting. Must be a California thing. The owner asked for 91 octane, so I will do that. If you were on my bike, I would just be putting an 87. I always stick with the manufacturer recommendations, but I definitely respect what they want to do with their bikes, so. I am an expert of timing the gas drops so that they don't touch the paint. Whoop, there we go. I have turned off to go explore Malibu Canyon Road. I can't say no to that. That's the fun part about this trip is that I have hopefully left some time to explore these types of things. So I have no idea what to expect here. We'll see if it's uh, anything interesting. Man, there's such good riding everywhere in California and there's such a variety too, that's the thing. This is totally different than the PCH and it was just a small turnoff. Let's go check out that view. All right, that is a view. That's great. Look at that. Hey guys, just checking in. Everything's going great. Um, so I've just pulled off and checking out the views and it's nice. There's no one here right now and there's some cool rock formations. Check out the view.
just pulled off at Neptune's Net. It's one of those places that always comes up in searches and things to do on the PCH. Nice to see so much motorcycle parking. Let's see if it's good. Just ate at Neptune's Net and I'm going to say that was a solid 9.5 out of 10. Seriously good. Um, I had heard a lot about it. A lot of people recommend it. So I know it's one of those places that probably gets a lot of traffic and didn't have the highest expectations for it to be honest. But uh, man, so good. I had the calamari and the fish, both were fried and uh, delicious. And the fries were kind of the McDonald's style, which I like. And um, so it was $26 for that meal. So that's the that's the 9.5 part of it. Um, obviously seafood's expensive, but I still feel like, even given that price and this area, like I cannot complain too much about that at all. So, yeah, if you're in the area, Neptune's Net, check it out. So, just left Malibu, and uh, I believe up next is Ventura. So, Ventura, Santa Barbara, my goal with those is just to drive through the middle of town, just to see it. Um, on the way up, I'm kind of just scouting out, okay, what are the spots? How long does this take me to get to Morro Bay? Because tomorrow, I'm doing the same drive backwards, so I'll see if I have time to stop a lot and... Um, or, or if I need to just drive straight through and that'll give me some time to kind of figure out all that. So until then, let's just enjoy the cruise. And welcome to Santa Barbara. Just gonna cruise down the uh, what I assume is the main street downtown. Check it out, and then from there, I'm gonna get some gas and just keep going. I'd rather get to Morro Bay a little bit on the earlier side, maybe catch the sunset there. But man, this place is gorgeous. Love this architecture. Look at this. Road closed. Going this way. Welcome to Morro Bay. All right, I made it. Long day of riding, at least for me. For me, I like to ride 100 miles. I don't mind 150, but 200 and above that, well, I just like to get off the bike a lot and explore, but it was good. Going to the hotel first to drop off some stuff, but then I'm gonna go to the Morro Bay Rock. I don't know if that's what it's called big rock up ahead of us. Should be a good stay. How cool. I'm, I'm right by the water it looks like. I'm at Hotel Visa. Not bad for $75 a night plus taxes and whatnot. All in just under 100. I think it's like 92. But uh, yeah, light, nice and uh, nice and bright. Looks super clean. Updated. Not bad at all. I don't think I really have a view or anything like that, but, uh, oh, actually, looks like I have a partial view. Not bad. Really can't complain for the price. All right. Now we're going to go check out Morro Bay Rock. Uh, I found a parking spot that's pretty close to it, but we're going to, we're going to go see if they charge. If not, we'll just see how close we can get in general. Looks like these are all the restaurants and shops. Wow, a lot to see here. Okay, it looks like there's plenty of parking in the area. Ooh, Harbor Hut, looks good. I wonder what these things are. So the Versus has been doing all right on dirt. There's been a couple times where I've, when I say dirt, I mean like 
gravel parking lot. It's nothing, nothing crazy, but uh, it's been doing okay. There's been a few times where I've had to pull off on the side of the road or, uh, you know, things like that, and it's been just dirt or gravel and no issues at all. I wouldn't hesitate to take it down a maybe a packed gravel trail or road or something like that. Okay, there's a lot of stand-up paddle boards going on. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it looks like you are directed to go right for entrance. There's no overnight parking or anything like that. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> big bump. Didn't see that. Wow, look at this thing. It's huge. Dang, big waves. I can see why this is a surfing town. This looks like, I don't know, I'm not a surfer, but it looks like prime surfing territory. I'll get up early to go see the sunrise. I know I won't be doing that. I am not a morning person. Okay, it's fine where the potholes are. Yeah, we made it out. So that, okay, that's the end of the line right there actually. <laughs> so, I wonder if you can walk it. Probably skip that for now, but. Oh, there's a big pothole there I have to avoid. This parking lot's a little bit rough. I'm trying to determine if I want to go out to eat and spend the money or just go to a convenience store and get breakfast and dinner for half the price. So we'll see how that goes. I'm trying to keep the budget for this trip somewhat reasonable. The bike was about $500 and I'm renting it Sunday through Wednesday. So with that in mind, um, just trying to keep the costs down as much as possible. And the hotels, like this one tonight, just under 100 with taxes and fees. And partially that's because it's a Monday night too. And, uh, but in general, some of the other hotels have been, like last night was 200, and that was a pretty budget place, the uh, Santa Monica Hotel. So, it can be spendy. And many times that means it's just coming out of the food budget. Mmm, Moro Grill smells great. But I feel like all I've had this trip is burgers and fried food. Ooh, that is a nice view right there. Check that out. Dang. Looks so good. Look at that. Little cruise through the town at night. Here we go. Let's see how busy this place is on a Monday night. It's got some art galleries. Restaurants. Jewelry shops. T-shirts. Construction. Well, as expected, not very busy tonight. Sure is pretty though.
Good morning everybody. Day three. So this is the most amount of miles I'll need to do on this trip. Uh, I think it's about 250 or so, depending on the route I take. When I get to Ventura, California, I'm going to need to decide if I'm going to cut through Thousand Oaks or if I'm going to try to go down to Santa Monica and see more of the coastline again. So I will make that decision then. That's about the halfway point from Morro Bay, more or less. And I will say that uh, the Hotel Avisa in Morro Bay, excellent. Highly recommend. Um, it's one of those places where it meets budget and comfort and cleanliness all in one. There were no issues with uh, anything really. And the nice thing about that room was it was spacious, more so than most motel rooms uh, or hotel rooms. Uh, so you had a little extra room, super clean. And if you do stay there, know that there is hot water. It just takes a while for it to actually get going. I almost thought that there was, they had turned it off. I think there were three people that stayed the night. Um, I only saw three cars in there. And by the time I left this morning, I was the only vehicle down in the parking garage, but it was a Monday night. So that's also part of it. But yeah, really great. And uh, it's in a great location. You can walk to the shops and restaurants just down the road. Uh, it's only like two blocks. So I'd recommend it again. And if you're here, Dolly's Donuts, yes, go there. Um, the donuts, I had a maple bar, fantastic. They also have those breakfast croissants and they were so good. And it was like $8 for a breakfast croissant and a donut. So I felt that, that was pretty good because donuts could be pretty pricey. So, all right. Here we go. All right, a little bit about this bike now that I've become pretty darn familiar with it. Uh, just a reminder, I am coming from a place of having owned a Versus 1000. Um, so I am familiar with the platform, the luggage, kind of the way they set up the rider triangle and all that. Um, I, I already knew that for my preference, there's about half an inch more reach than I would want personally. I would do bar back risers on this but uh, it is in already in a great position for a lot of people. Um, I knew the standing position was not really what it's made for. Um, you are pretty leaned over when you're standing, but it's totally possible. And um, something I was doing a lot of yesterday, uh, right around the fourth hour of driving. Um, so I can't fault it for any of that. Um, it's been good. It's been nice. It's actually, I would say, almost an ideal machine for this type of thing. Um, and it did all right in the dirt. Again, I say dirt, but I mean gravel, parking lots. Um, it did just fine. So I wouldn't hesitate to get something like this, especially if you find a good deal on this particular bike. Um, but for this type of trip, I guess ultimately I would prefer to be on the Africa Twin. Um, I just think that it is the best of everything. Um, it's got the cruise control already built in. It's got a more upright position. I can stand a lot easier on it. So I would go with that. Um, it's also got a little bit more bike in front of you, not just the windscreen, but just physical fairing and you know, the actual bike goes up a little higher. So that's kind of nice from a wind protection standpoint. But Versus 650 is like, I would say maybe even preferable for a Versus 1000. And the only reason I say that is because I just, I, I love my big bikes, you know, the Africa Twins big, the Versus 1000 is big, but it sure is nice to have something that is just right in terms of engine size and weight mainly. Um, it's not too big, but I have plenty of power. There's never an issue with like being able to speed up, um, even while standing and going kind of fast, um, you know, with the wind drag and all that, no issues. So gas mileage, great. So I would say that this is this is a pretty good close second. Um, shout out to this little Go Cruise. I don't know if it's that brand or not, or if it's a, it's a knockoff. I've had one of these before. And um, I've had this, the Atlas Throttle Lock. And then I also, if you can see, I put my, my Cramp Buster on there too. And I've used all three extensively. And I'm gonna go ahead and, the Atlas Throttle Lock works the best, but it gets, removed right away because one it's like a hundred dollars it might even be a little bit more it was expensive two it is tricky to get installed it's not like terrible but there's a lot of little screws and like little pieces you have to fit um, and it was kind of weird that it works by pushing the grip like outwards like it pushes like that way on the grip so I felt that was a little weird um, and then yeah just its price 
but it did hold the throttle pretty well. Um, the next, going from worst to best, I guess, the a cramp buster or something like this, they're like $10 on Amazon. That is better than nothing because it does allow you to, although your hand still needs to be on the handlebar, which it should be anyway, right? As I take my hand off, it allows you to go from here with tension to relaxed. And that's everything. Uh, that solves 90% of the issues with cramping up. So it's pretty good. It does get annoying when you have a lower displacement bike and you have to physically turn the handlebar more. Um, in that case, to get it in a nice position for your hand to be like this, but then when you come to a stop, the, the cramp buster has to return to a pretty upright position. So it's kind of in the way. Yeah, you just slide your hand over a little bit, but it is somewhat in the way. Having used this little Go Cruise here, which I, you know, like I said, I, I've used one of these on my bikes previously, but it was one of the first things I tried as far as cruise control, so I didn't have anything to compare it to. Now that I've extensively kind of tried all three of those methods, this is the one. It's the best balance of price point and functionality, and it's such a simple design. And um, the installation takes no time. You can switch it between bikes so quickly, and it does a really good job of holding the throttle when it's set right. Um, this one is one of the ones that does not have an adjustability. It's just made for these handlebars, which I believe are the 7 8 inch, I don't know, I don't remember the exact, the skinny ones that come on Japanese bikes, um, not the Harley ones. Um, so there's no adjustability, but it's like perfect. It, the way it, it's set up, um, it just grabs the throttle you're at and you know, the way it works, for those of you who've never seen one before, hopefully you can see that, is it just rests on the brake lever. And the brake lever has full functionality. At any point, if I wanna just turn it off, essentially, I just roll forward on the throttle. No big deal, totally works. And when I set it, I just push it down like that at whatever speed I'm at. So easy. So I think I'm gonna go back to that system for my XT250 instead of the Cramp Buster. It just works. Um, and it just works and it's just a huge help uh, in general for the longer stretches of highway. Not that really you need any of them, but it's just one of those things that's nice to have. So I would recommend the Versus 650 platform 100%. Um, the other thing is the luggage. That's actually the reason why I picked this bike and I was looking for these bikes. Um, is because I, I was familiar with the Kawasaki luggage, the hard shell luggage, which is fantastic. When you're not going off road and you don't need soft, uh, soft bags, um, this is the way to go. And I've had the, these OEM Kawasaki luggage sets on my Versus 1000, also my previous Ninja 1000, and they're big bags. They fit a lot. They, they all fit full face helmets. Um, not that I'm really storing my helmet in there very much, but um, and then the other thing that's nice about them is they are easy to remove. You just turn the key, you pop up this little thing, and you push it back off the bike, and they come off. Um, it's so nice when you just want to carry the bag up into your hotel room instead of unpacking it. Um, that's the way to go. This aftermarket seat that's on the bike is okay. Uh, I do like that it kind of cradles your butt a little bit, but it's the biggest drawback for me is that it's slippery compared to the stock seat. Um, so if we could find an aftermarket seat with this design, but that wasn't slippery, I like a textured surface because although like me personally, I feel like I'm fine on it. I'm not sliding around um, very much. I put stuff on the seat all the time. Like when I'm taking gear off, my helmet, um, the drone, the GoPro, gloves, jacket, all that. And everything just wanted to slide off. So I had to find the perfect balancing point each time. Whereas on the stock seats, you can just kind of put it anywhere and it's gonna grip. So I would prefer the stock seat personally. Um, so the other thing is, um, I'm not a fan of this exhaust. I am a fan of, let me rephrase that. I'm a fan of this exhaust if I wasn't driving all day on the bike. Um, it's one of those things where, oh, that's cute for 50 miles. But after that, it just gets annoying. Um, I can't hear, and I'm, I know I'm going against the grain here, but I can't hear the navigation directions. Um, when that's going, I can't hear the music. Uh, it just kind of drowns everything out. And it's not overly loud. It's actually a really nice exhaust. It's one of those Akrapovich 
uh, or acrophobic. Um, I've heard people pronounce it different ways. Uh, let me know in the comments which one it is. Uh, but I have no idea. But it's one of those where, like, yeah, it sounds really good. It's actually really throaty. It's got a bassy tone to it, uh, which is super nice. It's actually what I would choose if I was going to put an aftermarket exhaust, but I wouldn't do that on something I'm going to be on for a long time. That's why I don't have an aftermarket exhaust on my Africa Twin or my XT250 because I know that I'm going to be on those bikes for a long period of time generally so um, yeah that's just one of those things where if I was just commuting then there you go and you know what to be fair the owner of this bike said this is my commuter so in that case you know I think he made a wise choice but it's really on me for for uh, choosing this bike that has this exhaust and not noticing that ahead of time super foggy up ahead The weather changes so quickly on the coast. Stopped off in Ventura. This has been my deciding point for a while. If I go through from Ventura to Thousand Oaks, Burbank and all that, from here, it says it's gonna be three hours and five minutes. However, I would miss all the Malibu and Santa Monica stretch, which I really liked yesterday. Doing so adds on an extra hour and a half, almost two hours. So I think I'm gonna do it. I wanna see that stretch again, one more time before I'm done. And I don't have anything tonight, so I can get back to the hotel a little bit later, no big deal. But yeah, I think I gotta hit that coast again, so. Otherwise, I would be done with the coastline at this point. So yeah, let's go see it. All right, there's this really cool like sand dune up ahead. It's not really, it's not really a sand dune. It's more like the cliff has washed out and become sand. I don't know. Let's beat this truck. You can see on the left side, it's just a big dune. A lot of people like to stop there and climb it. Check out this view. There's the big sand dune. Damn, people are all the way at the top. So I'm back at Neptune's net. It's that good. I just can't pass up that fish again. So we're gonna go check it out one more time. I just tried lane splitting for the first time. It was cool, not too bad. It wasn't anything crazy. I was just coming up to a light and just split through like four or five cars. Nothing intense, but I wish I was legal everywhere. So I'm letting the experienced filterers go ahead of me because I think I'm filtering a bit slow. But yeah, it's not too bad. I'm just taking it easy. Sure beats sitting in traffic. <laughs> but I am very cautious with it, that's for sure. And if I'm not sure I'm like here, if I'm not sure I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna go slow and make sure. But it seems to be saving a little time. Okay, I totally get the loud exhaust for filtering. So that guy was kind of just wandering in, in and out of his lane and I gave him just a little rev. I didn't want to beep him. And he, right away he moved over. He's like, oh shit, I'm in the way. So I think that that's makes a lot of sense in this case to have the exhaust that's on this bike. And I totally stand by the dude's decision to put it on here if it is a commuter. I am hovering my fingers on the brake just in case. I usually try to do that, but I'm not always the best about it. And here it's like, I think it's a must. Another motorcyclist, gonna let them through. Man, they filter fast. That's 
I mean, it's partially, it's, it's mostly experience. I do not think it's stupidity at all. I think it's just pure experience and reading how, you know, the traffic patterns, how people drive. And people do drive different regionally. I don't care what you think. Everyone always says, oh man, the drivers where X is where I live. The drivers where X are the worst. Yeah, everyone's got bad drivers. Albuquerque is the worst though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, different things like um, in Albuquerque, when you're coming up to a red light, someone will cut you off just to get to the um, to the open space. If there's an open space in the red light that doesn't have a car occupying it, and that's a pretty common thing. And I haven't seen that once here. And of course, my sample size or whatever is only like three or four days, so I take that with a grain of salt. But um, yeah, I haven't seen that once. And there's been a couple instances where I expected someone to cut me off coming up to a red light, and they didn't. Um, but that's so common in Albuquerque, and I haven't seen it here. But here, there's a lot more tailgating, I would say. Um, even more so than Albuquerque. People are definitely like in a rush here to get wherever they're going. So yeah, this is my first time lane splitting. I did it like once or twice at two stoplights previously in Malibu, but nothing like this. This is, uh, and I was over there thinking, oh yeah, no, I won't lane split while moving. I'll just filter at the lights. I'll just filter to a, a red light. But here I am doing it. It's so tempting just to, do you see me? Do you see me? It's so tempting just to um, not crawl along in traffic. So yeah, absolutely the way to go. I wish you could drive in the outside lane. Pretty sure that's not part of lane splitting. All right, last night of the trip, staying at the Wigwam Hotel. TP17, actually a really nice place. Um, I saw it on TripAdvisor, it had good reviews and great prices. <laughs> so on a Tuesday night, I think there's maybe two people staying in the whole property and a little out of the way, it's the only thing, but not bad. It's a nice, nice room though. Uh, clean, updated and smells good. <laughs> The bathroom could do with an update, but hey, it's clean. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining me on this journey. Uh, this has been a fantastic ride. Like I was saying earlier, one of the best of my life so far. I uh, highly recommend you get out here and do this. If you live in the area, take your own bike. And if not, I would say Twisted Road is a go. Uh, but yeah, it's been everything I needed it to be. Um, you know, I had a lot of expectations for what it should be and like how much I'm going to stop off and all that, but at the end of the day, it's what I needed. Um, time on the bike is just as valuable to me as time off the bike. And, and I've seen so much of the coastline here and it's been good. All it's done is kind of just pique my curiosity. Next time you come out, I want to build even more time in and really take it slow, particularly in the Laguna to um, Santa Monica stretch. Definitely want to want to take my time through there and uh, really just stop off a lot and sit and stare at the ocean. But uh, I'm really glad I got this kind of overview of everything and uh, super excited for more trips like this. But uh, yeah, thank you guys again for joining me. Uh, thank you for watching Adventure Moto Southwest. And if you like what you're seeing, consider hitting the like button and subscribing for more. I've got lots of other rides planned in the future, gear reviews and all that. So thank you guys for joining and we'll catch you in the next one.